this is a live chat 2, 2.0 from the surgery actually. I did a live stream two days ago. Uh, I was over ambitious and underprepared, so it didn't really go well. Um, so this is 2.0 from the surgery. So I want to start this stream. There's nobody on the chat yet, is there? So I'll have a look. There's nobody there at all. Nobody there at all. What do we see? So I'll give it a few seconds to see if somebody comes on the stream. No. Oh, there's someone now. So you lay from doctor, left hand thread surgery. This is light chat two from the surgery. Like I say, I did a stream two days ago. It didn't go well. It's over ambitious and underprepared. So this is stream 2.0 or whatever you call it, or 2.1 or whatever you call it. But here I am. I want to start this stream by thanking the tool community of the USA, especially, um, and Canada. I see an upturn in UK viewers as well. How's Martin? Good to see you in the stream. I see an upturn in the UK viewers here. Uh, hey, BW's Electronic, yeah. Thanks for joining the stream. I was going to mention your name soon here. Anyway, I see an upturn in UK viewers as well, so thanks for that. Um, thank you especially to Brandon Tubbs from Tubbs Tool Reviews. I give the wee stream a like here if, you, if you're popping on. What inspired you to start your YouTube channel? How has it evolved since then? Could you share some memorable moments or experiences? Well, what inspired me to start the YouTube channel was um, I could go back five years, six years, look at my older videos, is to actually help people to fix stuff. And I always meant to be sort of a faceless channel, but things have changed. I started off fixing things, learning to be, learning, trying to learn myself and other people to fix things. When I learned something, I learned them, whatever. I learned the internet, as it were. And kind of evolved since then and 2017 i did a few videos like a wee dash cam video dash cam installation there's paul cook good man paul did you get your batteries yet <laughs> i fixed um have you seen the three hour live stream that i did a few weeks ago at paul cook's nine batteries on the on the bench <laughs> and uh i got four of them sorted you know so i started this channel to help people basically that's that's at the bottom line of it um i was a few months on to movie tutorial videos and youtube started paying me a small amount of money it was very little but they kept the fire in my belly and then i kind of get discouraged because they changed the rules you had to have a thousand subscribers i had about 83 but i still kept posting it posting things periodically but not as much and then just over a year ago a year and a half ago i noticed that when I hadn't been really watching my YouTube channel closely, it just took off and it was up to about 833 subscribers. So it was very near the threshold to get monetized and move on to bigger and better things. So I really got behind it, really got the repairs, really started the shorts videos that come on to the play by them. I really pushed it. And since then it's evolved. I feel like I've slotted into my niche. I've sort of became what would you say, the unofficial battery doctor of YouTube. I never meant to become the battery doctor of YouTube, but it happened. Well, aye, what, what, what advice would you give aspiring YouTube creators? Find something that you can do and you know how to do, or you're very, very interested in and are learning, and you like telling people about it. Everybody out there knows something, whether it's tools or whatever, whether a mechanic or whatever. Any wee thing that you know and you think it's not that important, there's somebody out there that either doesn't know it or, you know, they, they won't know it. Like there are things that I learned even from my, there's somebody put a helpful comment in one of my videos today and given me advice. So we can all learn from each other. So. Even if you're a YouTube aspiring content creator and there's people putting up stuff in the same niche as you're planning to do, you can do it your way. I'll give you an example. There's two 
very good YouTubers that I would be subscribed to. One is Dean Doherty from Moville, Donegal Fixings. Dean's a very good technician, but he doesn't quite do tool repair the way I do it. I don't do it the way he does it. And there's another guy from Lutheania called Power Tools Repair. And he does it. He's a pair of talking hands like I used to be before I came out from behind the camera. So is Dean Doherty, but this guy from Lithuania, I don't know his first name, but I always put on good comments and he always gives me good comments. He's a very good guy, but he's like a, he's a complete surgeon. He'll take a Makita drill and he'll take it completely to bots, he'll take the gearbox to bots and he'll clean every cog and leave it sitting out and clean it all out and put it all back together. He's just a complete surgeon and he does it completely different. His way is totally valid, but it's completely different than me. Dean is a very good technician. Dean can fix anything. But Dean doesn't, I think, from my perspective, inject the same sense of fun into his videos as I like to. He doesn't, he does it for his day job. It's not his passion, I think. Tools are my passion outside of my day job. So three different types, three different people in the same niche are doing the thing differently. Is there a particular subject or theme that you enjoy discussing the most and why? Are there any upcoming projects, collaborations your viewers can look, forward, look forward to? Upcoming projects, what was the one I was going to tell you about? Oh yes, 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 yes. Right. Upcoming projects. This is a Makita drum. This is like an old friend that I love to hate. Have you ever had one of those old friends that you really hated? This is that one. How this came about is I got a drill to fix with a bad gearbox. And I thought, I'll order a drill with a burnt motor. And just slot the gearbox onto the one with a good motor. And I ordered a DHP 482. And they sent me a DHP 456. And I did a live stream trying to fit two incompatible drills together a few months ago. And it was a bit of a disaster, but it was quite hilarious seeing me trying to fit things together, don't fit, putting things on backwards, whatever. But since that, I got a brand new motor for this and a brand new set of brushes and a brush holder, and I fixed that thing. That thing goes. There's an old rattle in the gearbox. See ya. See ya. That's when it's speed too. She's just not. There's an old rattle in the gearbox and I'd slap each other. But I'm going to um, have a plan for that one. I'm going to just put her to death soon. I'm going to give her a torture test. I should do my laptop. She doesn't like the battery adapter. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna torture this to death soon. There's gonna be a torture test video on this. I was thinking of doing it live, but I'm not gonna do it today. So that's the upcoming project that I have on board soon, hopefully. So you get up with the chat here. What are we going? Uh, what else was the what was the other aspect to that question? Well, I've gone enjoyed discussing the most I would have said over the last year the subject that I enjoyed discussing the most and it's very obvious to my viewers was battery repair battery business um, there's still more battery content to come I'm sorry if you're fed up with the battery content but it's not going away totally I think I might have nearly overdone the battery content um, upcoming other things would maybe be repairs and the thing about repairs is, not everything that I fix is uh, video worthy. Sometimes you just have to turn the camera off and concentrate and just fix the thing. Because sometimes it's just a wee bit too complicated to get a video out of. But I've done some quite complicated stuff. I don't know. I want to ask you, the audience, a question. And if you can, if there's any still there. Would you like me to do this kind of stuff where I'm talking to the camera and my surgery here? Uh, alongside. I'm, not, I'm still going to do the other stuff. 
still going to do live repairs, I'm still going to do live fixes, I'm still going to do my repair videos. I don't think I'm going to do any money videos where I'm talking to the camera, but we'll see. I want to know what do you viewers think of me talking to the camera rather than me fixing things. Me talking about fixing things. Is that still relevant to you guys? That's my question to you, the audience. Because um, I don't know if they're going to be. It depends how it goes tonight. I don't know how I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go forward doing these kind of videos because uh, I noticed the last talking to the camera videos. Are you happy enough? Paul's happy enough. That's a thumbs up from Paul. Don't forget to like the video, Paul, as well. Give her a wee thumbs up. Um, my last couple of videos where I was talking to the camera, I actually didn't gain subscribers. I actually lost a subscriber every time. Even the three hour live stream, I lost a subscriber. That's okay, I have 3,400 subscribers, you can burn an odd one. And I'm prepared to burn one or two tonight, if that's what it takes. But do you, my audience, the people who like watching my stuff, think that this is relevant, what I'm doing here? Talking to the camera. So I'll give you another two minutes, or another a few seconds, and then I'll get on with the next item. No, no, no more comments. But that's okay. You can put it in the comments later if you think that this is still worth doing. And if you watch this back again, recording, you can let me know. I have this beauty to sort out. Hey, Koki, Raymond Naylor. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see. But there's a. A nail belt bent like a banana inside her, so I have to try and sort that out sometime. Somebody's been a wee bit, I don't know what with that. And have this other little Makita DHR5, oh sorry, DFR550 Makita Autofeed. And what's wrong with that is, I'll try and get it up to the camera. The screw top's not going through this gate. Somebody's bent that like a banana too. And there's this one, this is on the theme of upcoming projects that may or may not make it to. The guy was complaining that this switch keeps switching itself off. I think I've it fixed, but I'm not happy sending it back to him. I'm going to order new parts for it. In fact, I've ordered parts with my big, my friend, Big Darren, who works in the warranty repair center. Oh, good man, BW's Electronic. I want to thank you personally, because you're always there on my streams i had a thank you list that i was thanking people before you guys come on the chat and thanks for coming on and asking questions bw say electronics you're always there you're always there with good comments you're always there in my stream commenting and i don't know how long you were in that three hour live stream you were there so long you hung on like a trooper thank you very very much so i'm going to get the parts order from my big late big darn for that works in the warranty centers are real there's two real good warranty centers in this country and one that's suboptimal i'll not name it but there's a guy called big darren works in the main one so where was i yeah i was thanking a lot of people before the questions started to come in the questions are better than thanking a lot of people i felt like i was at the oscars i thought Wall smith was going to come in and slap me but anyway it doesn't matter so thanks to you all for being the, in the stream and I'll just run through the few names that I was thanking. I'll do that there anyway. I want to thank Kieran Loftus, Kevin McCartney, Paul Cook for being in the stream there as well. Hoggy Bear, Megan McGee, Martin Kelly of course and Kamil Kornatowski and I want to give Kamil Kornatowski an extra bit of thanks. Kamil Kornatowski gave me my first bit of furniture for the new surgery, this racking. And I don't know what to use it for. I don't know where to use it for a triage or for repaired stuff. At the minute I've a few repaired items that I've done that people haven't collected yet. There's uh, two Milwaukee batteries. A nice little Bosch 18 BLA. A good friend Kieran Loftus's angle grinder that was dropped over in the bog by a 13 ton digger. 
all that there and give them a Curtinese compressor which is, is going to go down in history as the first fix in the new surgery this is the first thing I fixed, I fixed it before 27 one morning there I come out to this place and then I thought it bodes well for future fixes and future things and this surgery so I was talking about, I was asking myself questions have you any other questions Martin? or anybody else? I could tell you some things you don't know about Dr. Left Hand Thread because that wasn't the last stream but like I say that was kind of an aborted stream what you don't know about Dr. Left Hand Thread is I'm um, not a real doctor but I am a qualified animal medicines advisor which means I'm on a register of people that can prescribe medicines for farm animals, pets and horses mainly wormers uh, all sorts of other things too, anti-parasite, parasitic drugs mainly. So I'm sort of stretching at calling myself a doctor, but here I am. And I'm going to explain why I chose the name Dr. Left Hand Thread from my YouTube channel. I was thinking of a name for my YouTube channel. Uh, I was watching these old hacky videos. You see the ones? No, thanks Paul. I was thinking a name for my YouTube channel. I was watching these old hacky, what would you call them, viral videos, where you can, uh, how you can make your car shine by using toothpaste, or how you can use a paper clip to drill a hole in the girder. All this nonsense. And there was this guy. He was, oh, he was making a blowtorch out of a cigarette lighter or something. Good man, I must uh, BW's Electronic, I might start doing live streaming Saturdays just for you. You deserve it. But uh, this guy on the internet, this faceless channel was called Mr. Fix. And I thought, Mr. Fix, it's simple. But it's taken. So I thought, what can I be? I thought I'm going to call myself Left Hand Thread, but I'm not going to be Mr. Left Hand Thread. Call myself mustard. I would call myself left hand thread because if you watch my channel, watch the way I fix things. Some of the repairs are unconventional, and left hand thread is the wrong way. So I I do it the wrong way, and if you if you don't think I do it the wrong way, ask Mrs. Left Hand Thread. She'll tell you what way I do it. It's the wrong way. So I thought I don't want to be mustard left hand thread. I may I'm going to be a. I'm going to give myself an alter ego. I might as well give myself a recognised qualification like a doctor. I didn't want to be Professor Nuts or by Kate Bolts. I just used that the left hand thread. It seemed to work for me anyway. So what you also don't know about Dr. Left Hand Thread and this is where I might lose a subscriber. Dr. Left Hand Thread is a keen amateur guitarist. Now, my guitar playing in my head is amazing. But I've noticed something about my guitar playing. I enjoy playing more than people enjoy listening. I know this is a dull channel, so I'm not going to do an unplugged three year 90s song melody ballads. And on BWL Crowns, I clean set up and take down rentals for community centre also the repairs. Let's see how long I read that again. When you're reading your uh, message, BWL Electronic, clean set up and take down for rentals in the community centre also do repairs and prevent their maintenance of some of the equipment. Have you ever thought of doing any videos yourself, BW Electronics, BW's Electronic? Because from what I can see, you have a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill, a lot of you have a lot of know how, so if you do ever come up with anything or, or think you would get something out of it, I would suggest you would do it. Because it would be nice to it'd be nice to meet up with some of you guys as well. If 
if I can get my internet going right, that they can have a second person on or can do live streams with people, it'd be nice. So Dr. Left Hand Fred is a keen amateur guitarist like. That's all you get in today. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. <clears throat> I'm trying to think what else you know, you do you know about Dr. Left Hand Thread. Dr. Left Hand Thread uh, sells tools for his day job. As part of his day job, he sells animal medicine tools equipment and in fact in the last 25 years I've sold lots of very different types of products I've sold car parts I've sold all different types of tools I've never sold much electronic equipment I sold animal medicine I sold all sorts of hardware so I'm fairly experienced and uh, the tool game from that end of the market because a lot of people would be watching my channel and tool community and they'd be wondering who is this guy where's he coming from has he been on the job site for 20 years as he one of these guys not internet that's pretending to be on the job site for 20 years because those guys exist guys that pop up in your comments that claim to know everything maybe some of them do i don't know but anyway i'm not one of those guys i'm the guy that sells the tools to the guys that work in the job site and the best knowledge I got from tools was not from the companies that supply the tools. It was from the guys that were using them. I heard about all the failures. I heard about what problems they were having. When I heard what was good. I heard what was bad. So I had a very good insight to what, what's working and what's not. Also, the guys that I sell these tools to are guys that work very hard. And they work their tools very hard. And you open the tools and, you know... Sarah Mobile Diesel left a comment in one of my videos recently. Where do you find those poor abused tools? And that was a good comment because everything that comes to me has been worked so hard it is it is abused. I said that I was a I was a shelter for for battered tools, which I feel like they come to me when they're nearly dead, but it's. It's good fun trying to get them back going. Thinking about the deals and DIY channel problems, finding time. Time is a big issue in YouTube. Yeah. But find uh, I've done a couple of the deals videos. We don't have the same stores here in Ireland where I am. We have a couple of stores, supermarket stores, Lidl and Aldi. And they do Ferex and a Parkside. And they do deals, but we don't have the big super stores like you have the Home Depots, the Lowe's, the Menards. We don't have those. We don't have those over here. Um, a lot of people buy online or they buy from small, smaller stores like I work for. There's no real big, 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 big places where you can go and get all those deals like you can in the USA and Canada. But I have enjoyed the small for a that I've made into those deal videos. It is fun and um I think I have the knowledge to snuff out the deals and to know what I'm looking at fairly quickly. Even if it's a tool range I'm not familiar with, like a parkside or like a like a fair I kinda know what I'm looking at. So it's good that way. But uh as far as being a creator for yourself, I would say something I would say you could be on YouTube a while and making a few videos for you find where you are or what you where your lane is. You know, we all want to go viral, we all want to get these big videos and be making piles of money and all this nonsense, but that's not feasible in the real world. If you have over a thousand subscribers, apparently you're in the top 80% or something. That's a wild high percentage. There's a wild high percentage of YouTube creators that are monetized, that are making virtually nothing. You know, from my point of view, if I worked, I take two Saturdays off in the month, and if I worked those two Saturdays and didn't do YouTube, I'd probably be better off financially. End user is the best consultant, yes, for making your products better. I learned that from my time and uh, motor, motor parts. You learned a lot from the mechanics. You had your catalogs at that time, it's all digital now, but the time I was doing it back in the late 90s, early 2000s, 
it was all catalogues you had to look through the catalogues to find which part fitted which car and sometimes the catalogues were wrong so the mechanics usually put you straight and i used to a couple of days a week i used to do the deliveries too for the parts and what i did was when i was in the parts garage or, or the, the repair garage and i seen a car up in the left i had a good out inspection underneath to see where everything went i was coming on totally naive and green in 1998 but by 2005 i was a specialist for all the local cars parts i could have told you where every linkage and every ball joint went that day but i've been out of that game too long I've been in the animal medicine and tools game for about 17 and a half years now, so that's, that ship has sailed. So I always get more feedback from the mechanics and more information from the mechanics than the books and catalogs and the parts suppliers. They knew more. They knew what worked. They knew what parts were bad. They knew what parts were good. They knew what parts were lasting. They knew what brands worked. It was very enlightening. And you always consult, even from the animal medicine game, you have you have the medicines. You know all about the medicines. You know about um, what medicines for which. And sometimes the farmers will tell you, do you know that my, my sheep just don't seem well two days for two days after I give them that drug? And you go back to the vets from the companies and they'll deny it. But do you know what the thing is? The farmers know. The people that use this stuff. No, the people that use the tools, no. Like, I have learned so much from people on the job site that come back and says, you know, do you know what I've used my SDS for a year or my impact wrench, my Milwaukee, and the battery becomes loose and it burns the terminals. Milwaukee's not going to tell you that. Any other questions? Yep, yeah, right. So, from... Well, there's not many in the chat now, but go ahead. Which tools do you prefer? Is it Milwaukee, Makita, DeWalt? Which would you prefer if you had a choice of tools? If you'd only choose one platform, which would you choose? There's no wrong answer. And I'll move on to my next question. I'll just tell you where I'm going with that. And what I think about that. But if there's nobody able to chat, that's okay. Anyway, I think there is, or begin to think, you're just the walk because it costs a lot. And I would have a real, I would say, if you asked me a year ago, I was the walk. Nothing else, nothing else, because of the cost, because. You need something that'll do the job. And it won't cost the earth. It's a cost. Cost is very important. People think buy the best. It's not always feasible to buy the best of your if the finances doesn't allow it. And you know, DeWalt, you can get into DeWalt fairly cheaply. And some of the Makita, some of the lower end Makita, you can get into it fairly cheaply. Milwaukee does cost. Halty really does cost. So, I can see a big argument for DeWalt. Um, cost aside, my view is, if cost doesn't matter, which it does, but if it doesn't matter, there is an argument for multiple platforms, which means you have some DeWalt, some Milwaukee, some Haikoki, some Makita, and some Parkside or whatever else. This here is a prime example. This is a high cokey frame and nailer. And now, the feedback that I'm getting on this frame and nailer is very, very good. Somebody's jammed the nail on this one. So I'm going to ask my problem for later on. One platform, you go right away. They have a lot of oddball things that other companies will, will make. That's a very good point, BW's Electronic. And I would agree. Ryobi does make a lot of novel products that nobody else does. And... Uh, the closest thing that I can think to Ryobi, although they wouldn't be in the same league, the Ryobi, I would give Ryobi props for being slightly better quality. Parkside. Parkside do a lot of little wacky tools that DeWalt, Makita may not. 
They have a lot of interesting things. They won't last if you were taking them out to the job site. Park side will not last. The green park side will not last. But they have for DIY people. They're great. They have lots of little things that nobody else seems to be doing. Oh, there's Sarah Mobile Diesel. Good man. Good to see you. Hey, how's the forest fire fighting going, Sarah? I was just talking about you earlier on that you were going to... I was telling the, the folks at home that you were going to fight the fight the wildfires in Canada. Uh, well, I wish you Godspeed, man. I'm on over 20 platforms. My water is the best tool for what works. I agree with you, BW is electronic. I agree with you. I have become more interested in multiple platforms lately. This nailer is legit. And I, though it breaks my heart, because I like DeWalt, the DeWalt nailer is cheaper. And there's an argument for buying it. But it's not holding up under real intense scrutiny and real intense pattern over over months, years. Uh, it doesn't use a very good system. Now, the Milwaukee nailer, in my opinion, is far superior to the DeWalt nailer. I don't know how it stacks up against the high cookie, but the Milwaukee nailer has got a nitrogen, compressed nitrogen system. I'm just going to read Share Mobile Diesels, excuse me. Taking time, maybe a lost cause, the fires are too large. See if some communities were lost cause, sad. Pray for everyone. Well, I'll pray for rain tonight for you, Sarah Mobile Diesel. You guys in Canada are going through a bit of hell at the minute, so hopefully things get better for you guys. And fingers crossed, and you just take care of yourself, because I want to see you in streams again, Sarah Mobile. You're a good guy. I love your streams. I love them because I can switch them on in the morning when I'm making my breakfast, and I can watch you year go down a late one. Milwaukee nailers are damn good. I, they're well heavy. People don't like the Milwaukee nailer. Some people don't like them because they're going up on roofs and they're too heavy. If you're on ground level or something, if you're framing, if you're framing on the ground, they're very, very good. They have a compressed nitrogen cylinder on them and they're very easy in batteries. The battery life is phenomenal compared to the like of DeWalt. DeWalt needs a big drive because it's all mechanical. And uh, the profile wears out. There is a two-part video that I've uh, repaired a framing nailer. It took me two goes to repair it. Um, first video I put on a profile and didn't, didn't do the job. But there was a guy, I think it's an English guy. Correct me if I'm wrong, he's called Ben. And Ben put uh, put a comment up and told me how to fix it. So I, I fixed it and showed people how to fix it in the second one. Yeah. There's a company called Senko. They're based in the Netherlands as well. They do a nailer. And that's uh, it's a compressor inside. It's a compressor inside. I've seen the little uh, little funny snailer. It's awesome. It kicks like a mule. Very easy on batteries. But you know, they won't last forever. The nitrogen cylinder and the Milwaukee and the compressed air cylinder and the, and the Senko. They will need serviced. All nailers need serviced. Yeah. Yeah. Senko's good. There's a lot of guys using the Paslo gas nailers over here. They find them good. But gas is dirty and if you use their own gas, it can come up inside. And they do need service. They tell you if you're using them steady, they need service every three months. Which people don't like always doing because they like to just batter away. People just like to buy a tool and use it to death. But it doesn't always work in nailers. I just don't I think nailer technology is going to improve, but I don't know when. There's an argument for multiple platforms, definitely. Um, DeWalt is always there. Sometimes they're a wee bit over ambitious. They have the flexible batteries now, the power stack, which are a massive step forward compared to anybody else. Nobody's nobody's doing the flex volt other than you know the geo voltage backwards compatible. I know I suppose there's a metabo one, isn't there? I think there's a metabolic one. But anyway, there was a guy telling I must tell you a story today. I heard this very day. There was a guy telling me 
he asked me a question. He says, have you ever had a DeWalt battery go on fire and explode? Have you ever heard of that? And I says, that is very, very, very possible. Yes. He says, well, it happened to me. It was an XR battery. It was a 5 amp XR. He was driving it hard. Whatever he was working on, he was driving this battery so hard. And then it went flat. Yeah, the gas is pricey, yeah. Anyway, he was driving this battery so hard and then obviously it stopped working because it run down. So he took it off and he sets it to the side. He puts on the other battery and he's working the hard again. I happen to you. Paul, was that a knockoff battery or was it a real battery? <laughs> or a real battery? A, a DeWalt battery. This one was an actual DeWalt that went in fire. So he's, he's working away. And the son says, there's smoke, Daddy. What do you mean there's smoke? So he looks around this battery's smoking. So he gets an old bucket and he throws it over the top of it. And him and his son get to a safe distance. <laughs> and all I hear, bang. So it blew up. So that's very, very possible. And I think what caused it, I think the name for that is Thermal Runaway. Right, well, Sarah, thanks for popping on, and I hope, I hope that you just get on top of those fires out there. Hopefully, I don't start any fires on here with my batteries. But uh, I think they call that, uh, I was four years old. I think that happens, it's called Thermal Runaway. I've seen Dean Doherty mention it on his channel. Thank you very much, Sarah Mobilizzi. You're awesome yourself. You're a brave man. You to contain the money and putting your life in the line for other people. I appreciate that. Keep doing what you're doing. Come home, come home safe as well. They call it thermal runaway. When a battery starts to heat up, the cells in the battery start to heat up and keep heating up. It just runs away. Yeah, thanks for that. Oh, there's Kieran Loftus. Good man, Kieran. They call it thermal runaway when the battery keeps or a cell keeps heating up and then uncontrollably goes on fire and then the cells explode and you don't want to be around when that's happening because you don't want to get lithium burning your skin or anything it's crazy so Kieran Loftus we're going to talk about Kieran Loftus I want I appreciate him too this is a different drill than the one I showed you earlier on hi Martin's got a fire extinguisher Martin's my brother ah thanks Camille nice rack Camille's got a nice rack look it's my rack now, but anyway, this is from Kieran Loftus. Kieran Loftus has supplied me this free of charge. What I done is put a set of brushes in and fixed it up. So thanks for that, Kieran Loftus. Thanks for being the stream. <laughs> anyway, where was I? <laughs> Lost me through the thought. But anyway, um, Kieran, Kieran Loftus. Kieran Loftus brought me up a pile of stuff, and there's this. Uh, this angle grinder that Kieran brought me up. And what happened this is it had been ran over on the bog by a 13 ton digger. And I had to put a new, a whole new casing on it. And I also replaced the bearing when it opened because the bearing was pretty bad. See, it's, uh, it's on Camille's nice rack there. Along with Kevin McCartney's compressor which I fixed and Another guy's wash, which I fixed as well. So it's all all good in the hood. So you see my T-shirt, look. Can you read that? Yeah. So that's my unofficial merch. So it's good to see you, Kieran. How's things? Did you get the turf all home? In it. What else was I going to show you? Yeah, something I showed in the last stream, but the last stream was sort of aborted. Yeah, I got this little thing. What is this thing? I hear you cry. This is the thing that you put onto your belt, such as your belt, and you can put batteries on it, and the lid closes over. Like that. 
I recently procured such an item. People have been very good at furnishing me with items free of charge. Why breakdowns? <laughs> You're having breakdowns in the hull. You're break. It doesn't fit a. This doesn't fit a flexible battery. It just fits the ordinary standard size battery, like, like the Milwaukee or Makita, or even the one. So there we are. Gear and Loftus is having breakdowns in the hull, and Sierra Mobile Diesel is fighting wildfires in Canada and I'm sitting in Tyrone talking to the internet so we have quite the crew on board and Camille's admiring his rack so what else was I going to talk about we talked about mobile uh, multiple platforms how having different platforms like DeWalt, Makita, Milwaukee, Parkside, anything Ryobi, whatever you can get if you say a tool that's good and that platform and another the other tool of DeWalt doing the other, it's not good. Just get yourself a high cookie. I know you don't when you think of the batteries, but if you can get over that financial burden, I think you should do it. So when there are a few guys in the stream, I want you to, to tell me something. I'm gonna ask you a question. What is the most disappointing tool that you have bought? That not the most disappointing tool that you've seen, because that probably is me, but anyway. I'm going to give you a wee minute to answer that one. Nobody else in the chat now? What was the most disappointing tool that you have bought or that you've seen at work? Maybe the internet's too slow, maybe the chat's not... Quick enough, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. I'll maybe ask a, a series of questions. You can answer whatever one you feel you want to answer. Most disappointing tool you've owned or seen at work. What video made you subscribe to my channel? And what would you like to see me do next? Healthy. Health state as the S. Paul, would you not find that healthy is very, very overpriced? I wouldn't slag healthy off and say healthy is no good. Healthy is good, but it's far too dear. People go to healthy for one reason. That's because healthy do a longer guarantee than anybody. And you can get batteries replaced fairly quick, handy, you know. I very rarely get a healthy battery to service because... They replace them, they have a longer warranty than all the other platforms like Milwaukee, Makita, DeWalt, whatever, you know, so. But I think they're still overpriced, even they have that facility. All right, you like the, the care battery one? <laughs> I, funny, I didn't think that was my best work. Well, thanks for that coming. I'm going to ask another question. You can answer any of these questions. I'm going to keep firing them out because I don't know how um, how much a lag there is in the stream. Uh, well, when you're seeing what I'm saying and then you're replying when it's come back to me. But anyway, of all my videos, which type would be your favourite? Repairing tools, which is the core. The offshoot of that question would be battery content. Battery repairs, that's a, that's like a category of its own. Crazy oil bulbs where a bulb things like, I'm going to show you, for example. Where a bulb things like this. Get a bulb, oh, I have the batteries on this. Anyway. Dock Mad Max, exactly. That is a tire inflator. There's nothing remarkable of that. You look at it from the front, it plugs onto your cigarette lighter if you care. But I wasn't happy with that setup because it has its limitations. Because if you have a trailer out in the field and you have no access, you have no access to power. <laughs> Did you like the one with the trail in the bucket of water? <laughs> That's one of the crazier ones. But anyway, 
the torture test videos we'll call them the torture test videos i might do, i'm going to do one of them soon again but if you put that in there the lake works waterboard the drill was fun so i've turned uh, a plug-in tire inflator into a battery tire inflator for this milwaukee battery that incidentally i bought as well so that's that's the wacky bulbs i call them another type of video i do is called i will call them reviews where i take a product and i have a look at it and see what i think of it and there's one i've been doing recently but i don't know if we have the amount of stores that you need for it it's right here it's the store walks where you go around a store and show people what's available and what price it is so of all my videos what type would be your favorite I'm going to look at the chat here now. Right, I'll put that up there again. So feel free to answer any of these questions. Well, I'll tell you the story, but th this was a story that I told on the last stream that I abandoned because of technical difficulties or whatever, and there wasn't many people watched it anyway. I had a very exciting day a few days ago. I thought I was going to win the battery lottery, as it were. As you know, if you watch my channel, my channel is littered with battery content. I've become the unofficial Dr. Dr. Battery of the internet. So I was talking to a sales rep that works for a repair center, a warranty repair center. And I was telling him, hey, I've been fixing batteries for about a year now flat out for a year and making youtube videos and all and he says right good luck camille thanks thanks nice rack camille i like your rack they very rarely say that to a man but anyway i'm not sure where flexes draw impact driver 99.8 pound eights come close to buying them several times i left one and they say no because of the weight yes bw cell electronics how the thing feels in your hand is also very important. How the thing feels in your hand is also very important. And we're all individuals and we all, we all vary. That's why there's so many different types of tools. How it feels. Does it feel well balanced? Can you hold it all day? Is it going to, you know, I can give you an example of that. There's uh, something that's come into the market in the last couple of years called the uh, an agricultural fencing stapler, a farm fencing stapler. Milwaukee do you want, DeWalt do you want. The DeWalt one is better balanced, but has the same reliability issues that the nailer has. The Milwaukee one has a better bulk quality, but is very poorly balanced compared to the DeWalt one. So it's a toss up which one you go for, but I would say reliability would have to win the day and the Milwaukee would have to be better in that case. But how the toe feels in your hand is a very important thing. I would agree with that. If it doesn't feel right in the shop, it's the same with everything. If it doesn't feel right in the shop, it's not going to feel right when you're putting on screws all day with it. It's not going to feel right. Don't buy it. Don't buy it unless you, you know. Don't buy it if you don't if you don't fall in love with it right away. If you're not over the moon with it, don't. Don't do it. So back to the story I was telling you about. When I, when I say I nearly won the battery lottery, I got an offer I thought was going to be an offer of a pallet of faulty batteries. I was talking to a sales rep the other day. I was telling my channel, telling me we were repairing batteries for about a year. And he says, there's a pallet of batteries. I had a Tashi 9 inch, but nice grinder. We keep it good all round. Um, Makita, the Makita plug-in grinder is better than Hitachi. It's more expensive, but it's worth the extra money. But the sales rep was telling me there's this pile of batteries, and I would guess from what he told me there was about 500 batteries on this pallet. These were batteries that came back and were replaced under warranty, mostly in Milwaukee. Um, and that, that would mean these batteries were all under two years old and very indifferent amperes. And he says, 
He was talking to the store man. I see him. Oh, but I'm going to go into the live chat as well. I like a variety of repairs, batteries, and tools. You can actually have a bigger variety of problems. Yes, you can. But um, I suppose that's for watching YouTube. You get you get more information about what's good. I get feedback from customers and I find out what's what's working, what's not. But back to my story. The story is this guy has a big pile of warranty batteries that TTA did not want back or, or were not doing anything to collect. And he says, I'm going to ask the boss for you. Could you have them? Because they're taking up room in our warehouse. So many batteries on it, it's falling off. And I'm going to be on there in the morning. I'm going to ask the boss to see if you can have them. And I says, don't fail me. I says, this is like all my Christmas is coming at once. Have you seen some of the batteries that I fixed? Some of them have been rotten inside and I've still fixed them. But these batteries that he was suggesting to me were all under two years old. There would be very little corrosion on them. There could be damaged cells. There could be a lot of them would have been voltage drops. I would be disappointed if I couldn't get three quarters of them going with what I've learned in the last year. So it was like a kid on Christmas Eve that night. I'm surprised I was able to sleep. But I got bad news in the morning. <laughs> Apparently, they have to hold that pile of batteries on their premises. <laughs> they have to hold that pile of batteries on their premises until they get a notice of disposal. It has to be disposed of officially in the right way. Now, I don't know if you know anything about waste management. But some of the waste management companies locally have a lot to answer for. Some of them uh, built big sheds over piles of rubbish and then set fire to them after they get all the money for waste management. Some of them have dumped things places they shouldn't have. And I would, I would argue that Dr. Left Hand Thread is the best man in the country for recycling batteries. But that's not the way it's going to thrash out. So I must out on potentially 500 faulty batteries this week. But you never had what you never held in your hand. What you never had, you never lost. So Also, I'll move on to something happier, I think. I'll move on to a happier subject. Let's see, I'll look at the chat here again. You don't know... <laughs> I definitely won't care. But anyway, um, happier subject on my viewership. I said last week, I think it was last week, that I actually had a 6% female following on this on this format, on this YouTube. 6% females, which I was surprised of. But I got more good news this week. It's now 65 so I have gained 0.5 of a woman somewhere. And I don't know, that makes me feel good. It makes me have thoughts a married man shouldn't have. But anyway, so that's good news. God bless that half, not 0.5% of a woman. You're more than welcome, dear. Keep watching. And this channel here that I am at, was designed to share tips, to share repairs, to let people know. A lot of the battery knowledge, good man, <laughs> good man Paul, a lot of the battery knowledge was sort of gained over a period of time. All the things that I'm doing are self-taught. I have never taken any engineering lessons, engineering courses. I've never done it professionally. Um, I do rely on some of the repair centers for advice there's a there's a very good repair center in this country 
and they do DeWalt warranties and they've upped their game. They employed a guy recently called Darren, they call him Big Darren and Big Darren is an absolute legend. I could talk to Big Darren for hours and if I phone him and I ask him anything about a DeWalt or a hammer or what to do or what, what, what I should do, he's always very forthcoming with information. And I like to extend that to everybody on the internet. Anybody that wants to know, I'll tell them. If you put a comment in my comment section and I can answer it and I can help you, I'll answer it. Day or night. If I wake up in the middle of the night, have to go to the bathroom, and the phone goes ding ding, and somebody in Nova Scotia wants to ask a question about battery, I will answer. There is no trade secrets on this channel. I'm here to help. It's what my channel is built on. I think it's my thing. I think it's it's what I do. So when there's a few people on there, I think there's a few people on the chat there. Do you like this me talking to the camera type of format alongside what I'm already doing? I'm not going to move away from that. But I think there's there's a future in this podcasting, live stream, talking to the camera, answering questions sort of thing. I was over ambitious on Thursday. I tried to take a guest on. And I don't think the internet was able to carry it. But it might be something for the future. Maybe I'll get a better system in place. Like I say, I never even talked about the workshop tonight. All I said is I got this new rack of Kemi Karnatowski. But I'm waiting on a proper bench. I've got a makeshift bench that I've fixed a few things on. I've no electricity on it yet. <laughs> I'm sure if you ask nicely 500 batteries to come for 50, I don't know. I don't know about that. They need a, a certificate of a disposal. I'm not going to give up. But I think I could have recycled those batteries. But can you imagine had I got those batteries? Good man. So you, you're enjoying what I'm doing. Because when I do these live streams where I'm talking to the camera, I've noticed I lost a subscriber. I lose a man and gain half a woman. So what do you do? Um, those batteries. If I had got those batteries, I would tell you what I could, what I'd done with them. Most of these would have thought maybe I'll fix them up and sell them. That's not what I was going to do. I was going to start doing giveaways. I was, well, I couldn't have posted them overseas because you can't post, you can't post batteries overseas either because they'll have my on and the danger, I've talked about the danger earlier on. But I was going to do giveaways for people in Ireland of Ireland that I would have shipped them to them. I was going to do giveaways. I had it all planned out. Half a woman. <laughs> no, Martin, did you not get that? But, right, um, the half a woman's about that I realised uh, last week at a 6% female viewership, you'll remember that. But it's up to 6.5. So I've gained 0.5% of a woman. So anyway. Anyway. 50 batteries better than none. Nah, I know that, but um, we'll see how it goes. You never know what comes around the corner. It was mad to even get the offer of those. That boy didn't even know what he was giving me. He was giving me the, the battery lottery. So, you never had, but you never lost it. Whatever. Take the ball. <laughs> I'll take the top half, Martin, because I like a nice rack. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. <laughs> you boys can work away at the bottom I'll work on the top floor <laughs> uh, I'll be greedy that way I like getting well fed so are there any more questions guys we've been on nearly an hour now I don't know if we can do there I'm glad to see more people from the UK on the, the videos because um, 
There's more guys from England, more guys from Ireland, but <laughs> I can afford to lose 0.5% of a woman tonight. And I'll probably lose a man. Probably lose a man. But there was never a war without casualties, was there? But uh, I lost my train of thought there. What was I talking about? Well, I sort of covered nearly everything. We've been on over an hour now. So don't forget to give the stream a thumbs up there. And sure, the sun's sort of setting now slowly in the west. So I bid you all a fond farewell. Good night and be good. And remember, Dr. Left Hand Thread loves you. 0.5 of a woman. 0.5% of a woman. And that man who's leaving the night. I don't blame you.